So this video today is going to have a look at alternative dispute resolution, which is also known as ADR. And this is the process where parties in a dispute come to a compromise, often known as a settlement, um, without going to court. And the main reason why people use ADR is it saves the expenses of going to court and they can quite often get away with not using solicitors. There are four main types of ADR and then an extra one that we're going to have a look at. So what I've done is split up the types of alternative dispute resolution and I've also added in court into the bottom there based on who decides the dispute, so who actually makes the decision. So the top four categories are our traditional dispute resolution methods. So we've got negotiation where the parties themselves decide. We have mediation, where the parties decide themselves, but they have the help of a third party. We have conciliation, where the parties decide for themselves, but they have more active help from a third party who makes suggestions as to the way that they could resolve their dispute. And arbitration, where the parties agree to allow a third party to make the binding decision. So those are your main dispute resolution methods alternative to court. We also have tribunals where a panel of independent people make the decisions for the party and their decision that they make is binding. Tribunals look and act quite a lot like a court and we're going to have a look at tribunals in a bit and you can see whether you can spot the difference. And I've included there at the bottom in purple going to court, which is often known as litigation. And this is where the parties actually go to the court and the judge decides in the case. So what we've got first of all is an illustration of the way that tribunals make their decision. So you've got a panel of three people and confusingly, the person in the middle, the main person, is now described as a judge. And you've got the two people at the bottom, the parties of the dispute, Mr. Blue and Miss Green, who are being given a decision by the tribunal panel that they have to stick with. So what are tribunals actually like? Well, similar to a court quite often, you have a panel of three people. And even more similarly, one of those people is called a judge. The other two people who are on this panel have experience in the particular area to do with the dispute. So in the employment tribunal, you'll have people with experience as employers and people with experience as trade unions who will be representing or uh, will know about the experiences of the employee so that everybody involved in the dispute has somebody who understands what it's like from their perspective. Now, different to a court, it's quite informal. There are no robes worn. And you don't need to be legally represented, you can represent yourself. There are no costs awarded, so if you lose, you lose. And in some instances, it's free, but that's not the case for all of them. The Employment Tribunal and the Immigration Appeals Tribunals in particular have quite high costs if you want to go there. Um, there's no state funding, so you're not legally aided. And it's designed, at least, to be less intimidating than a court. I don't know necessarily whether I would agree with that, though. And the decision of the panel is binding. Some tribunals have an appeals tribunal, the Employment Appeals Tribunal, and uh, is part of the employment tribunal system. So there are two types of tribunals. The first one, and the most common one, is the administrative tribunal. So this was set up at the second half of the 20th century to enable people to enforce their social rights. And there are many types of these, employment tribunal, social security tribunal, rent tribunal. And they're now usually organised into a two-tier system. The first tier is split into chambers, with all the cases of a particular type being assigned to that chamber. So the health, education and social care chamber hears all the cases about mental health, uh, special educational needs and disabilities. And if you have an appeal, it will be heard by the upper tier. 
and appeals from the upper tier can go to the Court of Appeal from this point if they're on a point of law. So this type of tribunal tends to be between um, an individual and the state. So the state is getting involved. The exception to this is um, the employment tribunal. So the other type of tribunal is what is known as a domestic tribunal. And these deal with in-house matters set up with professional bodies to discipline their individual members. So for example, the British Medical Council has a tribunal set up to discipline doctors and the Football Association has its own tribunal to discipline footballers and people involved in professional football. So let's move on and have a look at arbitration. So this illustration demonstrates what arbitration is all about. You have the parties again at the bottom and the arbitrator makes a binding decision on who wins the case. So it's the most formal method down from tribunals and this is used where the parties with a disagreement pass their dispute to a third party who will make a judgment on their behalf and the judgment is binding on the parties so they can't choose whether to accept it or not. The agreement to go to arbitration can be made by the parties at any time but in business contracts it's quite often inserted into contracts in a way which is called a Scott Navery clause which says that if there is a dispute the parties have to go to arbitration before they can go to court. So the parties can agree a lot to do with how the process works. They can agree on the number of arbitrators and it can be three, two or even just one individual. The parties will usually appoint somebody who's an expert in their area of business. Um, and there's also the Institute of Arbiters who can provide a trained arbitrator to the parties who wish to settle disputes. The actual procedure to be followed is left to the parties to decide and the decision made, which is known as an award, is binding on the parties. So let's move down and have a look at mediation. In mediation, the parties still appoint a third party, but all the mediator really does is pass on messages. So they'll pass the message from the one party to the other and allow the parties to make a decision in a more laid back approach. So this neutral party, who's known as the mediator, helps the parties come to a compromise. They have to consult with each party and try and see how much common ground there is between them. They're just acting as a facilitator, taking offers between them. And it's important that the mediator never offers an opinion or says, I would suggest this or I would take that. And this is most suitable where there is some chance that the parties might cooperate with each other. And it's not legally binding on the parties. So at the end of the process, the parties don't have to stick with the agreement that they made. But because they came to it themselves, the chances are they probably will. And this is a way that you can save a lot of money on going to court. So let's have a look at mediation services. One of the main ones is the Centre for Dispute Resolution. And the Centre for Dispute Resolution will suggest a mediator and may be able to help set up the process. But the disadvantage is there is no guarantee that you'll come to an agreement. And it can mean that you'll pay for mediation and then you'll end up paying to go to court as well. The Centre for Dispute Resolution says that around 80% of disputes that they deal with are settled without going to court, so that's an advantage. And it's now possible to deal with the whole process online, which further saves costs. So let's have a look at conciliation. Very similar to mediation, but the difference is that the neutral third party actively makes suggestions as to how to solve the dispute. So the conciliator may plays a more active part in the process and they're going to suggest ways that the compromise could be reached 
But again, it's not legally binding on the parties. So if they don't come to a decision or they do come to a decision, they don't have to stick with what they've said. So let's have a look at some conciliation services. ACAS, the Advisory Conciliation and Arbitration Service, is used when there is a dispute between employers and trade unions to settle disputes. Ideally, this is before industrial action takes place. Hopefully, you will have noticed that at the moment, there is a big dispute between the government and junior doctors, and we've had some junior doctors going on strike. Before this happened, and at the moment, ACAS were used to try and solve this dispute, and that's still going on. So ACAS offers conciliation to both sides in unfair dismissal claims before it's taken to an employment tribunal. And around 60% of these unfair dismissal claims are settled before needing to go to the employment tribunal. So the final method of dispute resolution that we need to look at is negotiation. And this is the simplest form. Essentially, two people have a dispute, they can negotiate to come up with a solution themselves. An advantage is that it's completely private, so nobody needs to know what's going on. It's quick and it's cheap. It, in theory, could have no costs at all. Where parties to a dispute can't settle it themselves, they might instruct a solicitor who can negotiate on their behalf. And even when negotiation fails at these early stages, um, the solicitors can negotiate right to the point up until the court hearing to try and solve, solve the issue and not incur any further costs. So, what we've seen is there are a variety of different methods to solve your dispute without going to court. Some of the advantages are that they tend to be much cheaper, quicker, they're more private, but some of the disadvantages are they still have some costs involved. You may end up going to court anyway. And there's no guarantee that the other party will uphold their end of the bargain.